presenting you uh, two uh, different topics, but you will see at the end that they are very, uh, very connected. Um, my friend uh, Stevan is going to uh, move through the slides, and so I will be asking him to, to change slides from time to time. Uh, Stevan, you may go to the next uh, slide. So Linaro is um, an organization, a non-profit organization that gathers a number of uh, companies and uh, Huawei is one of them. Uh, we are working together to solve ecosystem problems. If you're using QEMU, you're using uh, quite a, a, a technology that we're uh, working on. Uh, and we are regularly in a, in a number of, uh, of other, other projects. You may go to the next slide. And as you can see, we are usually in the top 10 uh, Linux uh, contributors uh, and uh, in a number of other projects, particularly on the tool chain, for example, uh, you can see what we are doing. We are very connected to uh, ARM and that's how we worked with ARM to define system ready, which is on the next slide. So that is the Oniro architecture. And uh, out of that, if you look at the very bottom, you have the platforms like the Raspberry Pi and the, and the Seco uh, board. Those boards are the first two of um, the supported boards, but there should be many more. And how to achieve that, that's, you can move to the next slide. That's how to use system ready, which is a, set of standards that we will see uh, so that by saying Oniro is leveraging uh, system ready boards uh, a whole range of new boards will be available to Oniro so next slide so system ready is really a, a set of blueprints uh, that define how uh, the system is booting how is booting securely, how it is booting in a robust way, and also, and quite importantly, how you actually update the firmware and any firmware on the system. Uh, now, as we have seen with uh, uh, Oniro, there are a number of different operating systems and a number of different platforms, very different in terms of size. So, so uh, system ready is also uh, segregating uh, different uh, brands or uh, brackets of, of systems so we have system ready ir for uh, what we call iot ready uh, systems we have embedded server we have uh, server and we have linux boot those each uh, each uh, uh, blueprint is actually targeting a particular market segment. So IR is industrial automotive, embedded server, maybe more telecom market, telecom edge, server, that's obviously server, and LS is more like uh, cloud providers. Uh, for system ready IR, this is most likely based on U-boot. Uh, while embedded server is most likely and, and server most likely based on EDK2. Now, if we can move to the second, uh, the, the next slide. Before we go a little bit in the what is system ready, uh, maybe uh, some clarification about UFI. Uh, UFI is sometimes confused between. Uh, what is the specification and what is the open source project. So UFI is not a piece of code, that's a specification, so that's a PDF. Well, EDK2 is uh, really an open source project where you, um, you have the implementation of the UFI spec. So Linaro, ARM and a number of vendors have worked together for the last two years and a half to bring U-Boot uh, to implement the uh, our large number of UFI specifications so that the behavior of the boot uh, environment is very similar if, it, if you boot either from EDK2 or U-Boot, that's the same UFI behavior. Uh, to be more precise, if you look at the ARM documentation, there is an, uh, a recipe called EBBR, 
And EBBR is actually defining the profile uh, of, uh, of UFI uh, that we are supporting on, uh, on system ready. Um, having said that, we're also working with the, the UFI forum to make sure that uh, what we've been defining as EBBR uh, is actually also represented in, uh, uh, in the UFI spec itself. And we can go to the next slide. So for system ready IR, ES, and SR, there is a, a standardized boot flow, which is based on UFI. Uh, for a secure way of booting, you have UFI secure boot and measured boot. So that's using the same um, key technologies and signing technologies that you have traditionally on x86. Uh, with the additional flexibility that for embedded systems that will never run Windows, for example, you don't need any shim or grub to, uh, to be an intermediary for, uh, for the keys. And you can have the system only with uh, your own keys with a direct booting of the, the Linux kernel. Um, the robust way of booting, we've been working on integrating system D boot blessing mechanism so that when you update a partition and you have another, let's say, uh, safe place to, uh, to start with, this is all automated and all integrated with uh, virtually all these roles. The last component is a unified way to, uh, to update any firmware component through the update capsule. When I say any firmware component, this is because usually when people think of firmware, they think of U-Boot or ADK2, but there are actually uh, other firmware on the platform, uh, secure firmware like uh, trusted firmware uh, or OPT and some applications, uh, some secure applications that are typically not visible at all from the normal environment. Uh, but through the UFI capsule, we made sure that architecturally, uh, you can have a, a secure firmware uh, update passing through the update capsule mechanism and be, uh, and be passed to a secure firmware for, for changes. So in, in, in a nutshell, if you remember when you update your, your laptop, usually you have this message to, that says, don't, don't turn off your computer or you, you may lose, your, uh, uh, lose control of your, your computer. Um, we made sure that this is not re relevant anymore in, uh, on, the arm, uh, on the ARM environment uh, because of this uh, uh, standardization of any firmware update. Uh, I think I, I will skip for the uh, of the, uh, the the cloud service providers uh, system ready definitions. Uh, it's currently being done and it's not not finished. So we can move to the next slide. So. <coughs> System ready has been checked to deliver on its, on its promise. So we took a number of distros, uh, commercial and non-commercial. And so we booted one single image over 10 different platforms. And we made sure that um, the firmware can be, could be updated with a, a standard uh, tool uh, from Linux. And that's a firmware update uh, tool. Uh, so that's, that's really uh, working uh, now. And uh, the more you will go in the, in the year, there will be additional presentations where we will be uh, more public on um, uh, all the platforms that, that are supported. Uh, a little um, addition that we will so uh, uh, did uh, the past six months is the um, um, a new a new way to deal with initRD. Uh, so that's available since the kernel 5.12. Uh, there is a, uh, we call it uh, give me my initRD protocol. It's not uh, named like that, but that's the, the, the meaning. Uh, the, when the kernel is booting, it can request the firmware uh, 
to give the, the edit rd while being entirely uh, os agnostic on the firmware side and really not, not caring about the the source of the edit rd uh, from the efi stub so i think this is the the conclusion of my uh, my part um, so system ready is going to really be uh, instrumental in making many boards available for uh, onero uh, boards that may have not been initially prepared for onero will be uh, available uh, and but to make sure that this is working we will need testing and that's where uh, my colleague uh, Stevan will uh, will take over from uh, from uh, this uh, place and uh, talk about uh, testing. Stevan. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Stevan Radakovic, uh, and I am a tech lead at Linaro, and currently involved in the Nero project. So uh, thank you, Francois. Uh, so the system ready is supposed to bring in uh, many more devices to Nero and in order to uh, uh, leverage this and uh, in, in test all the, the, the on Nero on all the, all these new hardware boards uh, we can uh, leverage uh, Lava Remote Labs. So what does this mean? This means that the devices under test never never actually leave the vendor site and are still being tested under as part of the one global CI CD loop. The DUT management uh, is in the hands of the vendors, uh, and we don't need to actually educate the central ad personnel on every board from every vendor that comes in. There's no uh, hardware shipping return cycle. We reduce costs. There's no hardware ma maintenance, uh, and we can reach the so-called consortium scale with no single bottleneck or resourcing. So uh, this uh, the remote la la lava labs concept is, uh, deployment is completely automated. So uh, let me uh, let me actually uh, talk a bit uh, about uh, Alava first. So uh, this is a Linear automated validation <coughs> architecture. It's actually a test execution system, which means uh, it is testing the software on uh, real hardware. The device is under test. So the main uh, three uh, sections are uh, uh, deploying, deploying the image, uh, booting, and testing. Uh, there are many use cases. Uh, most uh, infamous ones are the uh, boot testing with the kernel CI system level testing uh, on the LKFT, power consumption uh, benchmarks, and, and, and uh, bootloader testing, and uh, many others. Uh, brief introduction to Lava. So, uh, without uh, Lava, uh, the developers and their uh, desks uh, are actually doing the power cycling of the board themselves. They're connecting to the serial uh, relay and then uh, <clears throat> setting up uh, their image in whatever manner necessary, either through U-boot or SD card, uh, and then <clears throat> they uh, run their test scripts and then collect the results and power off the board. So this is something that Lao takes over completely in an automated fashion. Uh, there are two essential parts of Lava, which is the Lava server and a uh, Lava worker. Uh, and uh, this uh, the supported methods for uh, deploy boot and tests are, are are many. So for the deploy, we support anything from uh, TFTP uh, to to SSH and Docker. For the boot, uh, we support uh, U-boot, uh, CD, Fastboot, Docker, QMU, and uh, many others. And uh, for test uh, test deployment, so we do it from the Git repository, either interactive or uh, multi-node. Uh, so we've got uh, more uh, north of uh, 300 supported devices in Lava, and this has been a, a project which is really mature, uh, uh, like uh, ten, 10 plus years uh, or old. Uh, and uh, let me talk briefly about the concept of remote labs. So Lava server and associated uh, workers can be optionally uh, located in different places physically, and um, multiple workers, for an instance can be distributed in uh, multiple locations and each group of workers is called a remote lab. So uh, each group of workers can uh, have uh, multiple uh, DUTs attached uh, to, to, to all of them. Uh, the Lava server is just collecting and storing the test results uh, and hosts a web interface for all the distributed workers and their associated DUTs. It appears as a, a single instance, but it is anything but that. Um, so, Let's uh, go 
go over and talk about the Onero uh, Lava deployment. So we've got uh, Lava deployed uh, at, uh, for the Onero uh, development cycle uh, uh, as part of the uh, CI CD. So the deployment of Lava in the Onero is done completely as a uh, uh, using infrastructure as a code method. So we utilize uh, Ansible and Docker images. We've got a, mat, a Lava <clears throat> a Lava server running in a cloud. We've got uh, workers. Uh, provisioning uh, uh, completely streamlined, so installation configuration is is is, is uh, uh, automated. Uh, we've got uh, automatic upgrades of the remote labs based on the master version. So, essentially, uh, when a ma uh, when the um, uh, master server is uh, upgraded, all the workers are uh, upgraded automatically, wherever they are, be it the vendor or at the local site. There's no uh, upgrade downtime, uh, and uh, the, we've currently got uh, three uh, so, uh, so remote labs. One is in Warsaw, one is in Belgrade, and one in Shanghai. The supported devices that we uh, currently uh, <coughs> test in Onero uh, are QMU, uh, Raspberry Pi 5, Nitrogen, and Arduino uh, Nano BLE33. And we've got uh, two more uh, devices uh, ready to be set up. Uh, these are the second boards, the V68 and the uh, C61. Uh, so uh, this is a brief um, uh, uh, loop of the uh, CI, CI testing in uh, Nero. So we've got uh, uh, we've got uh, developers committing uh, code to the uh, GitLab <coughs> repositories. We've got uh, Vbake uh, churning out artifacts. And then we submit uh, jobs, testing jobs to Lava uh, with those artifacts. The Lava does uh, all the testing uh, on the DOTs and uh, the test results, <laughs> after the test results are uh, collected, after the jobs are uh, finished, we trigger a pipeline in GitLab, which collects the results from the Lava server via the REST API and then report back to the uh, GitLab so that uh, on every, essentially in every merge request you can uh, Check out if if any of the tests are failing against uh, all the uh, supported uh, targets. Um, so uh, this is an example of how we look like. Uh, currently, we run uh, uh, a CTS uh, test suite against uh, the uh, supported boards in the Onero. Uh, we've got the pipeline. I've got the uh, summary of the tests and the success rate for the specific merge requests and on every commit we do that so uh, let's uh, move on uh, so this is a quick summary of uh, what I just covered so basically developers push MR build artifacts uh, the GitLab builds artifacts and we submit loud test job via the CI pipeline we run the tests and trigger the uh, manual CI pipeline from Lava to feed results back to the GitLab and report those test results back to the merge requests and profit. So, and uh, this is a, a, just in a couple of images of the support devices, which I already mentioned includes uh, second boards and Arduino, uh, Raspberry Pi, and Nitrogen. So. Uh, that's that's all for me. I will switch uh, back now to my colleague Francois. Thanks, Stevan. So uh, hopefully we we will have illustrated that uh, System Ready brings on Euro uh, uh, a whole lot of new platforms, um, and that also from a testing perspective, um, as you don't have to test BSP uh, specifics. Uh, you will be able to concentrate the test effort on, on the functional uh, tests rather than low-level uh, 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 board tests. So uh, I think we, uh, we have gone through all uh, our um, presentation and uh, thank you very much for attending. Hello, we are now ready to uh, address questions. I think we have a few of them. Um, the first one, so at Linaro, 
you create baselines supporting different balls for all kinds of industries. What is the main opportunity from your point of view for Oniro? Um, I, I would say that um, if I understand properly the, the question, um, what Linaro, well, and ARM brings, uh, first of all, is a, a set of standards on which uh, Oniro can build. And uh, when it will be full, fully deployed, today we have probably 10 or 20 balls that are already uh, system ready compliant. It means that uh, an Oniro developer could choose, pick and choose any of the system ready boards and develop on it in a transparent manner. Uh, so it, it brings the ease of use of uh, x86 with the creativity of the, the ARM, uh, ARM hardware and SOCs. I guess I properly, uh, I hope I, I properly uh, uh, answered the question. Uh, another question, uh, looking at the system booting process, what is that thing that Oniro should implement that others are not today? Uh, so there is uh, some technologies that are uh, in upstream review for the moment. And <clears throat> this is about to, um, to really uh, boot without shim and grub. So shim and grub are good for, uh, let's say, developer uh, workstations, it's uh, very easy to, uh, to use. But for products, it adds two other uh, code bases, <clears throat> code bases, which means that uh, it's additional security problems, potentially. Uh, and we've seen a number of uh, uh, attacks on, on, on Grub. Um, there has been situations where Grub is not supporting, let's say, a DME environment, while Linux is supporting it and the firmware is supporting NVMe. So I would say that the Oniro would be uh, probably uh, uh, well inspired to try to have a very direct boot without shim and grub um, to avoid security and, uh, and boot time uh, issues. I think the last, the, not the last, but the next question is probably more for you, uh, Stevan. Sure. Uh, so the question is, can existing and future members decide which tests and test results will remain internal and which ones can and should be shared? So the answer is yes. The uh, Lava has a complete uh, horizontal and vertical uh, authorization backend. So uh, uh, we can uh, always uh, decide which uh, test jobs and consequently, consequentially uh, test results can be uh, shared and uh, for, for each group. Um, I have uh, another question. What is the main output that Linaro expect from Oniro in the coming month? Uh, so maybe you, you have a, an idea for this one too, uh, Stevan. Uh, for me, really, this is going to be um, to uh, integrate Oniro as part of all the system ready boards that, uh, that we have in our CI and make sure that uh, Oniro is, uh, is running on those. So um, the output I would expect is to have um, uh, the full uh, uh, hardware support uh, uh, in uh, in the Oniro kernel right from the beginning. I think it is there, but you, usually <laughs> CI is there to verify what we know is true uh, at 99% of the time, and we identify the corner cases. So another question, what is that security related feature that in Linaro's view would differentiate Oniro from IoT and Edge platforms? Um, I would suggest that every security feature be uh, enabled. Now, people tend to not like AC Linux, but it is helping to secure it, secure uh, the environment quite a lot. Um, 
IMA, so is another, uh, so it's integrity, integrity management uh, architecture. So that's about not signing the applications. And uh, there has been extensions on IMA to deal with uh, uh, multiple signatures for, for different applications so that not only the distro provider can sign applications, but also uh, it's a trusted application provider can sign their applications. So I would uh, think that uh, implementing those two uh, security paradigms are very important. And also um, probably look at uh, container authentication uh, through PowerSec. So I think that that would be the, the, the three technologies to look at to, uh, to make sure the security level on, uh, on, on Eero is a uh, state of the art. Another question, Linaro collaborates on Zephyr. What is the main opportunity you see for both projects that should justify a tight collaboration? Uh, <clears throat> super good question. So uh, Zephyr can actually run on Cortex-M and, and A's. So we have, we are currently working on, on scenarios where there will be uh, multiple Cortex A's and Cortex uh, M's and maybe Cortex R's, let's say in the automotive environment. And you will find uh, Zephyr and Cortex A and, and, and M's and, and Linux on the same box, on the same platform, on the same SOC. Um, so the tight integration is just to make sure that we have all the technologies needed, like uh, OpenAMP, so we are actually uh, working on creating a new project, which is called the Heterogeneous Platform Project, where we will uh, work on all those technologies in, uh, in Zephyr and Linux. Uh, they all already exist, but they are usually downstream in, in, uh, uh, in the vendor SDKs. We want those uh, elements to be really in upstream kernels, upstream Zephyr, uh, and in some cases, even upstream uh, U-boot or Opti. Uh, so in, there will be um, uh, quite a good deal of work in, uh, in, in this. TSN is a field where Linaro has invested effort. Any opportunity you see in this front for Oniro? Uh, Yes, so we, we have integrated uh, uh, what we help do is actually have a number of vendors agree on the, on the TSN architecture in the Linux kernel. And then once we have done that, we let the community continue to add uh, shapers and, and things like that. Now with virtualization, there will be a, a need to implement probably extensions to Vertionet to be able to support uh, uh, TSN on virtualized environment. And I think that's probably a, a good area of collaboration with our Nero to, to, to bring TSN to VMs. I think we are getting close to the end of the, of the talk. So thank you very much for attending the session and uh, have a great uh, end of show.